Precious Father and Almighty Lord, we are before you this wonderful Sabbath full of thanksgiving and praise for how good you continue to be unto us, Lord, even when we don't deserve it. We praise you for your greatness, your might, your holiness, and your power. We thank you that even in all this, you still come down to us, mere mortal, sinful, and unworthy um, people, Lord. We ask that you may cleanse us and wash us and make us clean, Almighty Father. We ask that you may make our homes altars where you shall be and uh, temples and churches where you shall, your presence shall be there as we come to worship you, Father. Amen. We ask that you may be with um, the rest of our fellow brothers and sisters, Lord, that they may be able to join in on this, Lord, that we may worship you together and receive the blessings that you have planned for us. We continue to pray for uh, the world um, all over and all the countries, you know, the difficult times that we are facing, Lord. And it did not take you by surprise, but you knew all along. We pray that you may continue to give us strength even during these tough financial times. We ask that you may continue to provide for us, and especially for those who don't even know where their next meal will come from, Father. We pray that you may. We remember all health workers, all doctors, all nurses, everyone involved um, in trying to make everything better or pave a way forward. We pray that you, your protection may be upon them and we pray that you may continue to pray. We pray for our leaders all over the world that you may give them wisdom to make sound decisions. And even as we experience this, let us not come out without learning the lessons that you um, desire for us to learn. Lord. Fill our hearts with love. Help us to know that we are all your children Lord, and to reach out to to everyone and especially to those things. As we um, start our Sabbath worship, we pray that your Holy Spirit may be with us and that you may guide us. May we be revived and renewed for the week that is ahead. Everyone that you will use for your glory and for your honor, we place into your hands and we ask that you may be with us through to the end of the day. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Sister Pauline, for that wonderful prayer. We will begin the service with our opening hymn by Brother Samuel Oyemma's family. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Brother Samuel Oyema and family. We God want bless to, you. Yes, we want to thank the God for that beautiful opening hymn. And next on our item this Sabbath morning is our mission story. And that will be done by Sister Yetunde Kasali. Mission story. Sister Yetunde Kasali, please. Happy Sabbath, children of God. Happy day. Happy day. Um, this morning, our mission appeal is coming from Poland and it's told by Marius Makowski, who is 55, and it's titled One Bad Decision. So, um, Pastor Marius offers weekly worship services to inmates in a prison in Poland. So, after several months of such services, seven inmates decided that they were ready for baptism. So, the question arose as to where to baptize them. So, he thought to himself, he could, um, they could be baptized at the Baltic Sea. So he wrote to the prison warden and asked for four days for these inmates to come back to be baptized. One day to travel by plane, two days to be two days on the site because it was an upcoming camp meeting, youth camp meeting. Two days on the site and then one day to return back to the prison. Now, according to Polish law, inmates who have served to third of their prison sentence and exhibited good character can be allowed to leave the prison for short periods of time. So the um, prison warden gave special permission for six out of the seven inmates to go and be baptized. So the next week, the pastor came with several church members who were to escort these inmates by train to where they will be baptized. So on hearing about the baptism, one inmate said he as well wanted to be baptized. His name was Jerry. So he had served to third of his prison sentence as well. So he left a day earlier and said he will meet up with the, with the others. So the train journey was exciting. Um, 
a church member brought her along. His guitar, they played Christian songs. And during the journey, they at the station where Jurek had said he would go, but Jurek was nowhere to be found. So that Sabbath, the other six inmates got baptized and they returned. When they returned, the inmates and the prison guards, they were all shocked to see the six inmates because they had placed bets on how many would run away and escape. All six of them returned, but Jurek was nowhere to be found. So it, um, an arrest warrant was issued on his head and he and, and the police started um, looking for him. So because of this, he could not find a job. He decided to loiter about with his criminal friends and then invited his 17-year-old brother to join them. When one evening, they were both drunk, the two men, and they attacked um, a nurse who was riding on bicycle, carrying a bag of apples to give to her colleagues in the hospital. They attacked, raped, and strangled her. Then after a severe manhunt, they caught the two men and they arrested them. So 20 years down the line, um, the pastor, Pastor Makowski, he was still down because of Jurek's story. Because to him, Jurek was so close to accepting God if only he had boarded the train. So he felt really bad. So, but, you know, he just felt bad. Then one day he got introduced to a man. His name was Tommy. The person who introduced him said that he was uh, an ex-prisoner. So he, and he needed a place to stay. So what could the church do for him? Then the pastor met with Tomic and he discussed with Tomic. Tomic knew a lot about the Bible, but he felt resentment towards God. He was bitter. During Bible study at his apartment, he would, offer, he would often spit out and rage, cursing God. One day he told the pastor that, you know, pastor, you serve God and you love him because you have a good family and you have a good life. That he, on the other hand, had neither. His father was, his father and his brothers were criminal. His mother was a drunkard. He, his older brother was spitting the food he should eat and his mother and one of his brother even raped him occasionally. So he told the pastor, how do you expect me to believe that God is good? So the pastor wondered how to answer that question. One day during um, service, Bible, um, Bible studies the pastor normally had with him, the pastor told him about how one bad decision can ruin people's life. And in order to, you know, explain it further, he gave the example of Jurek, who he almost got baptized, but he escaped. And look at how the bad decision impacted not only Jurek's life, but his younger brother. When Tommy had the story, he was pale and he stared widely at the pastor. The pastor became scared. And then he now remembered that um, Tommy was convicted for murder. So he was afraid. Then Tommy looked at the pastor and told him, Pastor, I am Jurek's younger brother. I am the younger brother that got arrested with Jurek some years ago. Then the pastor was shocked. Then he said, so he learned a big lesson from that. And from then he has been preparing for baptism. He wants to give up um, drinking alcohol. In fact, his performance was so good that the rehabilitation center where he was, two people have been led to baptism because of his attitude. So um, Jurek has impacted, Tomic Rada has impacted people's lives. I just want to read a part here. It says, the story of Jurek shows that when you are close to God and he speaks to you, you should make a decision immediately and not delay. The Lord has made it found. Part of the story is sad, but also it shows the great power of God and how he can, and what he can do in our lives. Imagine meeting Jurek's younger brother after 20 years and being able to teach him about God. Amen. Um, he said, thank you for your 13th Sabbath offering in 2017 that helped build a television studio for Hope Channel in Poland. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Mr. Yetunde Kasali. That was a very beautiful story, uh, mission uh, report. There is not a report for the God to do. He can change anyone. We want to thank you so much for that uh, contribution to today's worship. We will go straight to lesson of today. Okay, sorry. By scripture alone, uh, sola scriptura. Sorry, um, the memory text taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of 
joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. The Protestant claim of the scripture alone, which means sola scriptura, elevated scripture to the role, to the sole standard and decisive source for theology, in contrast to Roman Catholic theology, which emphasized scripture and tradition. The Protestant faith emphasized the key word alone, that is, scripture alone is the final authority when matters of faith and doctrine are at issue. It was the Bible that gave the decisive force and authority to the Protestant Reformation and its revolts against Rome and the error it had been reaching for centuries, over against an allegorical interpretation of scripture. We have many different meanings we have read into the biblical text. The Protestant reformers emphasized the importance of a grammatical, historical interpretation of the Bible, which took seriously the grammar and literal meaning of the biblical text. So this week, we'll look at sola scriptura in greater detail. We'll learn that sola scriptura implies some fundamental principles of biblical interpretation that are <coughs> indispensable for a proper understanding of God's work. As Protestants, we must maintain the Bible as the ultimate doctrinal authority. As Protestants, as children of God in this end time, we must maintain the scripture as it was originally written, not what is mixed. Like I have read uh, some Bible portion which say that Sunday is the Sabbath day of the Lord. So those kind of Bible, we have to be very, very careful. And in this lesson, we will see how the Protestant claim of the scripture alone, this is the only words can give us the insight of, what, uh, of who God really is. As we go into the lesson of uh, today, we will see um, some important messages about the Bible and how to claim that scripture alone. Amen? Amen. We will go Amen. into the lesson study proper and uh, we'll invite Professor Tabatunde to take us through Sunday lesson. Okay. Happy Sabbath to you all. Happy day. How many minutes should I spend on Sunday? Yes, yeah, it's a review. Five minutes is okay. Five minutes, okay. Yes. Okay, let me see whether I can. Sunday is talking about scripture as the ruling norm. What that simply means is that the scripture itself is supposed to be the utmost, the principal guide to interpret itself. And when you do that, you will discover that you will not understand a miss. You will not misunderstand so many aspects of the scripture. Now, they are trying to tell us that from the beginning, we seven the Adventists have considered uh, ourselves to be people of the book. And because of that, we believe that to affirm the biblical principle of sola scriptura, that is solely scripture, only scripture should interpret scripture. It should not depend on any external stuff that will bring confusion and so on and so forth. And in First uh, Corinthians chapter four, uh, verses one to six, especially verse six, is clearly telling us that you, we should never think of any man's opinion to be better than the word of God as it is written. That is the summary there. Now, when you do that, you say scripture alone is the true Lord and master of all writings and doctrines on earth as written by Martin Luther. So the summary of uh, Sunday lesson is that 
we should depend solely on the scripture that is on the word of God as written in the Bible to interpret itself. So with this, I think I stop for contributions and questions. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Bubatunde. Uh, we have had uh, the lesson review from him, the scripture as the ruling norm. Do we have any question or contribution? Scripture as the only authoritative book for the Christians, for the world. Do we have any question or contribution to that before we move to Monday lesson? Okay, I want to believe that it is very clear. We will now go to Monday lesson and uh, this uh, review will be done by Mrs. Kasali. Happy Sabbath to you all. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Yeah. Happy day. The title is The Unity of Scripture. The Unity of Scripture. Here will you all agree with me that God is the author of the Bible. That is the, the word of God. And um, the scripture made us to understand in um, Second Timothy um, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. That is, it is not from the individual that have written the, the, uh, the Bible, but from God. And the same thing in... Um, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 21. It says, For prophecy never came by the will of man, but only men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So this is to tell us that God is the originator. God is the author. Everything in the Bible uh, that men prophesied about came from God. I mean, prophesied about because we have some, um, just like uh, people will take us up when we come to the, uh, about Moses, you know, law, they said laws of Moses, that it was Moses that came up with some of this law. That is maybe uh, between uh, two individuals or between uh, the people uh, in, in his time. But when we talk about uh, prophecy, that is prophecy what to happen Things that will happen later on that has not yet happened. So we see that God is the originator. God is the one that gave this prophecy to people who were moved by his Holy Spirit. So there is no dispute. There is no doubt about that. So because God is the, is the author, we see that every word of the Bible agrees with one another. That is, there is unity in the in, in, in the word of God, there is unity. And uh, we see that um, the Bible, um, uh, the Bible is the word of God that, can, that cannot go against uh, itself. The word of God cannot go against itself. And uh, when we look at that, we see that uh, without the unity, the Bible would have been uh, a thing that, People will rubbish. People will rubbish because it will, the truth will not be there again. There will be hearsay, there will be fallacy, and so many other things. But, be, but because the Bible is the word of God, when, uh, when one says something, that is the, the, some of the things that have been said, maybe in the Old Testament, we see that the people of the New Testament, they repeat the same thing because it comes, all comes from the same God, the, 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 uh, uh, the same author. So it cannot be uh, uh, different. So it is the same. And also, uh, I want us to uh, look at it in uh, the second one, two, the third paragraph. We talk about Jesus and the biblical writers. However, assume the unity of the scripture, which, which is based on its divine origin. We can see this in their common practice of quoting several Old Testament books of equal and harmonized weight. So uh, Paul quoted a, a place 
in the Old Testament, in Ecclesiastes 7.20 and even Psalm, uh, we thought about uh, the, uh, everyone I've seen. There is no one that I've not seen. We see that they harmonize. That is, they are the same because they come from the same author, the same source, which is God, the Almighty. And also, um, when we look at uh, during, during the time of the uh, um, disciples in the Acts of Apostles, chapter 4, chapter 4, verse uh, 13, when um, they arrested the disciples, Peter and John, because of the miracle that they did, and they told them Jesus Christ, and they told them that they should look at it if it is what, if it is right in their own eyes. And that very place, Pastor now said that they perceived, they looked at them and they saw that they are uneducated and untrained men. You see, this is to tell us that it was the Holy Spirit that gave um, the utterances that these disciples used them. So it is God who has done that and is still the same today. And when we look at, um, when we look at the by, um, um, Titus 1, uh, 9, Titus 1, 9, which I will quickly read. This, Titus 1, 9, okay. He said, Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine go to exalt and convict those who contradict. So there are some people that will come to you, uh, you or to, to us to tell us what is not in the Bible. And, uh, and that is why uh, my elder who handled Sunday said, scripture should be able to interpret uh, scripture. So when they come to us, we should uh, look at the, the word of God and try to what? And try to harmonize and try to look at it together and see whether truly what they are telling us is really from, from the Bible. And uh, also, uh, uh, there is this particular one, when we look at uh, the footnote there, what should we do when we come across text or idea that appear contradictory to each other in the Bible? And all of you will agree with me that there is uh, this scripture that people always use, especially for us, the Adventists. That is in uh, Colossians chapter 2. Uh, when we read from verse uh, 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 on, the, uh, uh, on the cross, that let no one... Uh, um, I'm quickly going there. So, it said, um, it said, having wiped out the handwritten of requirement that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it on, uh, uh, on the cross. And uh, when we go there, it said, let no one, uh, verse 18, mm -hmm. let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and... Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. verse 16. So let no one judge mm -hmm. you in food or in drink mm -hmm. or regarding a festival or new moon or Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So many people always take us to that, that Jesus has nailed... Uh, uh, the worship uh, 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 on Saturday that the Sabbath on the cross. But when uh, we try to open the Bible, because the Bible will never contradict, uh, contradict itself, we yeah. let them know yeah. that yeah. that yeah. very yeah. place, yeah. the verse, yeah. talks about Sabbath, because there is S, there is plural there. So <laughs> it cannot be the day, uh, uh, the holy day, the Sabbath day. So when we try to um, uh, look at uh, words that contradict itself, we should not only take just one place, but we should open scripture and we should, we should, we should look at scripture to scripture to be able to enlighten people about the unity of scripture. And that will help. And I would like to conclude by reading. He said, there is no discord between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The New Testament does not contain a new gospel or a new religion. The Old Testament is unfolded in the New Testament, and the New Testament beats upon the Old, Old Testament. As such, the two uh, 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 testaments have a uh, uh, reciprocal, recipro reciprocal relationship in which they shed light upon each other. 
so they cannot go against each other. So the scripture is the word of God and it's uh take its source and inspiration from, from God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you very much, our mommy Kasali, for that uh, beautiful explanation of the unity of scripture. Just as she has mentioned, the scripture can never contradict itself. In fact, there is cooperative cooperation and cohesive in writing the scripture by the men of God that we are influenced by God. Sometimes people of the world will just pick a text and just say this is what the Bible says. But sometimes we need to look at some texts uh, above and some texts below to be able to understand what the Bible is saying. And constant study of the Bible will give us more insight and how to understand the Bible. We want to thank uh, Sister Kasali for that beautiful lesson. I will pause for any question or contribution before we move ahead to Tuesday lesson. Okay, somebody was raising up his hand. Please, you can go ahead with your contribution. Thank you very much. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Good morning, sir. Uh, you may not know me. Happy day. I just joined you from Nairobi, Kenya. Okay. Uh, there are the people who are here who will know. Professor. Okay. Uh, not again, speaking. that is uh, Dr. Yes. Tayo. Yes, that's me. Baba Praise Edward. God for that. Now, the first thing Amen. before I go into the... Um, Zoom is warning you that you have less than three minutes left. Yes. So, can you please tell everybody what you are going to do if they don't give you more time? Because of the number, they may not give you more time. So are you going to now quickly set up again and invite everybody probably for another 40 minutes? No. And where no. you will send the link? Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I've already informed them, in fact, since last week, that uh, once it disconnects you, you try to connect back to the same meeting. In fact, I booked about uh, more than two hours of meeting. So once you are out of connection, kindly connect back to this same meeting. Okay, thank you very much. My my contribution will be on the first um, on both Sunday and Monday concerning concerning um, the uh, scripture as uh, the main authority. The fact that the world has not um, kept to this is the basic reason why we have so many religion, number one, but especially so many denominations, um, so many Christian denominations. And therefore, just in case Satan is trying to cheat anybody, to start thinking, no, it's not the Seventh-day Adventist church. There is another, make sure that whatever you are planning to do, it's all based on the Bible. It's very, very important. It's absolutely important. Please, let's keep to that. Um, number two, concerning the unity of the scriptures, is the same thing again. When people pick just a part of the Bible and they hold on to it to say this in this we believe, what uh, the Bible says in Isaiah about interpretation of the Bible is a little bit there, a little there, line upon line, precept upon precept. In fact, over 60%, I need to get the figures later, over 60 or probably up to 75% of the number of verses in the book of Revelation are just only from the Old Testament, which means a good knowledge of the Old Testament will help you, especially the book of Daniel, of course, will help you to understand uh, the book of Revelation. And if you understand the book of Revelation, you will understand the Bible. So let's, uh, let's realize this, that... <coughs> A, a section of the Bible is not supposed to be is not supposed to be studied on its own. The example in the law, rather than the principle of the law, it's one one side of the what they're saying is 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 true, but the other side is not lived up to in terms of the principle. The principle around it would make you be able to understand um, all the other parts of it in context of the different situations. And this is here what. Jesus is kind of showing them when they were picking corn. And, and there's another part where he talks about um, the donkey that was in the pit. And um, it was pulled out of the pit. 
pulling them out the pit was seen as doing work. Yeah? That's what I mean. It didn't doing work. But it was the work of God. It wasn't the work that we do in the six days. Than the work that we do in the week. Does that make sense? Is it clear? Yeah. Okay, moving yeah. on. Yeah, so the first part is talking about clarity, and obviously, there, there was need of more clarity in their interpretation of the scriptures. This is the Pharisees we're talking about. So we go to the lesson, go a little bit further down here. It describes um, how we should look for sufficient clarity in the word. And it says, the Bible is sufficiently clear in what it teaches. The Bible is so clear that it can be understood by children and adults alike, especially in its basic teachings. As yet, there are endless opportunities for our knowledge and understanding to grow deeper. We do not need an ecclesiastical magnetism to provide the Bible's meaning for us. Instead, its basic teachings can be understood by all believers. It assumes that the priesthoods of all believers, rather than restricted to interpretation for a few, such as clerical priesthoods, therefore we are encouraged in the Bible to study scripture for ourselves because we are able to understand God's message to us. That's kind of highlighting how it was back in the day when the, those um, Catholic priests, and I think to this day it's the same, they have the priests are the ones that are interpreting the Bible for them. When you go to their churches, if you've ever been to one of them, they won't really have the congregation reading from the scripture. The only time they seem to participate maybe is when they sing from the actual hymns. But all the instruction is from the priest. The reading of the Bibles, the Bible study, is more done by the priest. And they're seen, like the Pope, as like a Christ figure to be able to interpret the Bible. And that the, your normal laity, those in the congregation, are not in the position to do that. But as it reads here, the Bible isn't of a mystery to exclude your lay person. It's open and free for everybody to be able to understand it. So going back to the idea of clarity, those who obviously interpret this in other denominations of the Christian faith have to realize that even with scripture, it isn't um, solely for the priest, it's for everybody. And it's made clear, there's no mystery there. If you go a little further in the study, it talks about, it, it compares it to um, um, corn, yeah? So it kind of says there that it's not like it's got the husk over it to kind of protect, protect a, a mystery. And it has to be stripped down so that we can get the kernel. The way that the Bible speaks for itself is clear for everybody, whether you're a, an elected uh, professor or whether you're a person who's not educated. That is what I've um, gleaned from this, um, today's study. Uh, I'm not sure um, how you've interpreted yourself, but as it shows here, it's looking at us, putting, putting um, the word in context of its clarity is open for everybody. It's a saving um, counsel that is not to leave anybody out, it's to include everybody, every child of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Brother Adele uh, from Manchester. The Bible actually needs clarity. And if I may ask the class, had there been any time or at some point you don't understand any text in the Bible, but you got to know it later, probably um, the pastor preached about it, or somebody had a discussion with you and tried to make you understand what that text is saying. How has this helped you so that you can extend this same um, understanding to other people? Because there are a lot of texts in the Bible, people will read and read and read over and over again, yet they will not 
understand what the text is saying. So this is a question for the class. Had there been any time or at, at, at some point you go through the scripture and you don't actually understand what the scripture is saying? I need one or two contributions, please. Amen. Amen. Um, I oh. want to tell you that um, when I newly joined that Adventist church, the Seventh-day Adventist, Yes. Uh, it took me time to really understand uh, predestination, predestination. Okay. And um, and I always looked at it that God is aware of everything about us. That He He predestined what will happen to each and every one uh, of us. And uh, it was really something that I had on for so many years. Uh, the then pastor, Pastor Smith, tried to convince me that there's nothing like that. Pastor Jassy came and uh, they explained, explained some of the church members in Canadian Church really helped me to understand uh, uh, destination. Because when I read the Bible and I uh, Jacob, I love, he saw, I ate. I said, ah, these are some other things about destination. So I, I, said that, I said to myself that it is, it is God that planned everything concerning us. So we are just to, but they made me to understand that we are not robots. That God, because the end of each and every one of us, and based on that, he can tell who will uh, uh, be this or uh, who will be that. So I want to tell you that I, I fought with that. I had that in the past. But I thank God for church members, and I thank God for my pastors. Amen. Okay, thank you very much. I can see the hand of uh, Professor Babatunde and uh, Dr. Tayo. Uh, please, Professor, you can go ahead. Professor Babatunde, please go ahead with your contribution. Then uh, Dr. Yes, Tayo will go I, next. I, I want to share also that... Uh, we need to be very, very cautious and try as much as possible to give the Bible chance. Serious and meaningful and ample time because it is deeper than the shallow way we look at it. A particular verse, somebody will bring out and it will begin to shake somebody. The Bible is not meant for you to understand just as if you have been born to understand it, no. It is true time, just as uh, Sister Kasali said, from time to time you begin to understand gradually, gradually. Okay, let me just uh, join this one to the one that uh, Sister Kasali said now. He's looking at uh, uh, Saul and Jacob and said uh, predestination. So she picked the issue there and then she's been made to understand it. It's not like that. Now, what about if somebody opens to uh, the book of Romans, chapter 8? and verse 29 uh, and 30. You see predestination there again, written clearly this time around. How do you interpret that one to be able to come out from the understanding that one has about predestination? Now, time we feel that I will be able to explain what predestination actually means from the Bible, it is written in the Bible. Maybe when we have time, and then we delve into it very well. Because there is actually predestination. So I think I stop there. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Tayo, please go ahead and give us your contribution before we move ahead. Thank you very much, um, Elder. Um, there are times when people feel that they are not able to grasp the message of the Bible. And uh, so many people are using the book of Revelation as an example that hey, it's not possible to, to understand it and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, let's realize that the, the Bible is now open. What it means is that everybody is, should be able to understand everything. Revelation chapter 22 verse 11 talks about, do not seal the prophecy of this book. So if we lack understanding or we have insufficiency of understanding again as the next uh, as as the next round of the study will talk about um 
it's we should rely on other parts of the Bible. I had the problem um, of trying to explain the beginning of the prophecy of Daniel chapter 8. Again, just like Mrs. Casali, when I was newly baptized into the service of the Adventist church. Okay, we tried to use Ezra, is it Ezra chapter 2, is it Ezra chapter 7, and so on and so forth. But again, it's relying on other parts of the Bible. And of course, please let's continue to remember that it is the Holy Spirit that is in charge. It is as we pray, and the Holy Spirit gives us the capitation that we understand. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tayo. I will now go straight to Wednesday lesson, which says scripture, interpret scripture. The scripture, interpret scripture. What an interesting topic. I will now invite Sister Miriam Uosun as she takes us through the review of this lesson. Thank you. Happy day. Happy day. Happy day. Happy day. Happy day. Happy day. Like we all know, God is the author of the scripture. And he made sure that all the scriptures in the Bible were commonized. Now, when God died, on the cross, there was something before the disciples. I will read to Luke 24, verse 27. Luke 24, verse 27 says, What was said about himself in all the scriptures, beginning with the book of Moses and the writings of all the prophets? Now, it has its interpretation in verse 44. Then he said to them, These, things, these are the very things I told you about while I was with you. Everything written about me in the law of Moses and written of the prophets and the son has become true. Then he opened his hands and understood the scripture and said to them, this is what is written. The Nehemiah must suffer and must, and must rise from death three days later. And in the name of the Nehemiah, about the Nehemiah. This is the scripture which is written itself. That these things are bound to happen. Now, in scripture, when we read, when we read before and then we also read after. When we read a little bit of her, we also go down as well to get the understanding and the interpretation of that scripture. Also, the beauty of letting scripture interpret scripture is that it yields further light on its own meaning. Now, we will read through some Bible verses. Let's go to Revelation 17, verse 1. Revelation 17, verse 1 says, then one of the seven heavens, seven angels, who had come to bow. Then one of the seven angels, who had the seven doors, came to me and said, Come, and I will show you how the famous prostitute is to be found. That great gift that is built near many rivers. Now, its interpretation is in back to see. Revelation 7, verse 15 says, The angel also said to me, The waters we saw on which the prostitutes sit are the nations, the people, races, and languages. These are the interpretations. When we read from the top, we go down below, we get to the interpretation. I will also read from Daniel 8, verse 3 to 5. Daniel 8, 3, 5 says, And there beside a river I saw a ram that had two long horns, one of which was longer and newer than the other. I watched the ram putting with his horns on the west and north and the south. No animals could stop him or escape the power. He did as he pleased. And he arrogant. But I said, while I was wondering what this meant, the great thing, washing out of the west, moving 
being so fast that his feet didn't touch the ground. He had one dominant hand in his eyes. When he reached down to verse 19, he had a clear picture and a clear interpretation of what that verse is saying. Now, in verse 19, what is this saying? He says that, and I said, I am showing you what the result of God's anger will be. The version refers to the time of the end. The land you saw that had two horns represent the kingdom of Nigeria, Libya, and Syria. The gold represents the kingdom of Greece, and the dominant horn became his eyes in the first king. The four horns that came up when the first horn was broken represent the four kingdoms into which the nation will be divided and which will be as strong as the first kingdom. You can see how the Bible moves is when we read from the top and go down below to the first top. And last version I will read from John 1, John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, which we all know. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. In the beginning, in the beginning, the world already existed. The world was with God and the world was God. From the very first beginning, the world was with God. Through him, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without him. And that is so simple and explanation. But we have the good experience. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Miriam, for that uh, beautiful lesson, Scripture Interpret Scripture. If you are opportune to have an expositor's Bible, a reference Bible, or a study Bible, you will actually get to know how Bible or how the Scripture can interpret Scripture. You will see that some, there are some texts that has some other references. By the time you read this text and there is a reference to that text in another book of the Bible, you will tend to understand more about that text. I'm privileged to have uh, an expositor's Bible gifted to me by Eda Nosowa. I'm also having uh, another type of Bible called the Message Bible, but as an app in the Android store. Message Bible explains, in fact, it is very explicit on some text in the Bible. It will explain it that you will be able to understand. I would like to pause here for one or two contributions. I saw the hand of uh, Brother Prosper. Brother Prosper, are you ready to give a contribution? Brother Prosper? Okay, in the absence of any other contribution, we'll go straight to Thursday lesson, and I would like to invite Eda and Osoa to take us through uh, Thursday lesson, which says, Sola Scriptura and LNG White. The Bible and the LNG White. Eda Sowa, please. Um, this is another important area of what we believe as Seventh-day Adventists. Um, Sola Scriptura and Ellen White is the subtopic for today. Um, the Thursday lesson is linked up with what we studied last week Thursday. It's in, the same, it's in the same line. And as we read previously, it says in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20, that to the Lord the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it means that there is no light in them. And that makes the Bible authentic. But then we also need to prove that the Bible is authoritative. And for Seventh-day Adventists, we believe that for the Bible to become expository, as we have said, there must be um, an inspirer so that we can stand on and believe. 
And we are grateful to God that we have the person, Ellen Goldfight, who was inspired by the Spirit of God to expose the Bible for us to be able to understand it much better. So, Sola Scriptura, which means that the scripture alone. Now, what makes the scripture so unique that it stands alone, that it is inspired? Now, we see Ellen White as somebody who is a messenger of God. Now, I would say that if you, if you look at the writings of Ellen White, he wrote the great controversy. And I will ask some question. Can we name a few books that she has written? Great controversy. We have Steps to Christ. We have um, what else? Testimonies for Happy the church. Marriage. Happy marriage. Mm. Now, when you line all these books up, and then you take your Bible and compare word for word, line by line, paragraph by paragraph, you identify that they are all in line with the Holy Scriptures. That makes it an expository part of what the Bible says we should do. So you can see that Ellen White was a messenger of God, called by God to expose the Scriptures so that we can understand it better. So the Bible itself is a unique book. It is not just a history book, but because of what has come out of her from God, we see her as a prophet or a prophetess given to us by God to learn from her. Is there any contribution or question? From what yes, you... Elder. Yes, sir. Elder, we should not, um, that towards the end of um, the Thursday lesson, that's a kind of a warning there. Okay. Uh, that um, we should ap appreciate the writings of Mrs. White. Yeah. But the function is different from that of the Bible. Okay. That our writings are not an addition to the scriptures, but are subject to the Holy Scriptures. We should just note that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Whatever would this mean? God used this occasion to announce to the world about the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. It was to announce to the world that the power of Satan had been broken at the cross. Yes, it was to announce to the whole world the freedom that Christ had given to all mankind. What was the result? Verse 41 and 42 of Acts of the Apostles says, and I read, Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to the church of God. Amen? And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. The one-time rebels became obedient children of God. The Old Testament appearance was to announce the Ten Commandments of God by which he rules the world. And so in James chapter 2 verse 10 and verse 10 to 12, the word of God let us know that yes, indeed, God had a mission. And this mission must be fulfilled. My dear friends, <coughs> children of God, it is God's power for us to live as God's children. 
it is God's power for us to live as his children. And that's what he says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, 31 and 32. I read, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Verse 32, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Amen? Amen. It's God's power that lives in us and empower us to live holy in a sinful world. It is God's gift to make mankind in place of humans that live in some people. That's what Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 says. With the Holy Spirit power in us, we can obey God. Just as Christ would obey his power. Yet not of the but if as the children of Christ. We can be called the true ambassadors for Christ. The question I want each one of us to answer in our own way, in our hearts, are these. Have you met God? Has he appeared to you? Is God's spirit living in you? Has God written his law in your heart? Let's open to Matthew chapter 16. We will read verse 26 and 27. And then we will conclude with with Matthew 24, 30, 31. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26 and 27, this is what Jesus says. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. My dear friend, what is it that you are doing? Remember that God is going to come again. Amen. And when he comes, he is going to judge us according to how we have spent our lives in this earth. And that's why in Matthew chapter 24, verse 20, 30 and 31, Jesus says, Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Verse 31 says, And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect. From the four winds, from one end of heaven to another. My dear friends, that is why in I want to agree with this songwriter, Williams. 
when he says in him number 296 I've wandered far away from God now I am coming home the path of sin too long I have trod Lord I am coming home coming home coming home never more to roam open wide thy arms of love lord our experience each and every one of us knowing fully well that our god is going to come for us so that together we will be with him at the home that he has prepared for all of us Amen. god bless you and may god keep you till we meet again his name. Amen. 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 We would like to Amen. thank Pastor Majase for that beautiful word. It's good to always be home. And we pray that when God will come in the class of heaven, we will be partakers of the heavenly kingdom. We all have been hoping it's to come. We pray that we will spend a thousand years with him in heaven before coming down to this earth again when it must have become a new Jerusalem. May it be so with all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. We bring the service to a close. The family of the one past will sing the closing hymn. And it will be coming from the five, five, six. Let the kings now live in a song of thanksgiving to God the Creator, triumphantly raised, who fashioned and made us, protected and saved us, who guided us unto the end of the days. His banners are o'er us, His light goes before us, A pillar of fire shining forth in the night, Till shadows are vanished, And darkness is vanished, As forward we travel, From light into light. His Lord he enforces the stars in their courses, the sun in his orbit obediently shine. The hills and the mountains, the rivers and fountains, the deeps of the ocean proclaim him divine. We too should be voicing our love and rejoicing with blood adoration our song let us raise till all things now living uniting thanksgiving to God in the highest Hosanna and praise. Amen. 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 Our kind and loving Father who art in heaven, we humble ourselves in humility before your holy presence. Thanking you for how far you have been with us during this difficult and challenging time in history. Father, as we are not able to help each other, save each other, hug each other where possible. Your love for us has never ended. We have opportunity through this Zoom platform that yes, we may be far away from each other in our various rooms and homes, 
but we can still worship you together. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we say glory and honor be given unto your holy name. Amen. We want to pray for that, Father, this pandemic of COVID-19, my God and my team, you will provide a solution to us. Amen. One of us to remain safe when this period is over. Mm. Father, we we'll are able to come together and give you songs of praises in celebration for the victory you would have won for your people. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. The Lord will be signed up for you. Amen. Amen. The Lord will give you peace. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy day. Happy day. Happy day. Happy day. Happy day.